Hello. Uh, my name is Leia, and in this session, we're going to talk about onboarding. First, we're going to take a couple of minutes to explain what onboarding is, why it's important, when you should do it, and how to do it well. And next, we'll take a look at a movie rating app in desperate need of some explanation and look at how we can use the existing UI to help users understand the app better without being too obtrusive. And then finally, we'll spruce up our step-by-step -step onboarding by only letting users move a step further when they've completed the task at hand. So what is onboarding? Onboarding is a way for you, the developer, to introduce the app to your users, demonstrate what it does, why that matters to the user, and how they can start using it right away. So why do it? Well, just like in real life, first impressions count. 90% of the downloaded apps eventually get deleted because of a poor or negative first experience, said a study by CompuWare. <laughs> um, and in order for a user to return to your app, you have to not only offer a great service, but also make sure that your users know that they can count on you to help them out. By explaining how to use the app, you're showing your users that you care about them. You're establishing a relationship of trust and reliability between your users and you. And good onboarding pays off. Another study by Compute shows that a good onboarding experience can result to up to a 60% increase in conversion. So now the last question is when to do it. There are four basic user interface or user experience situations that might need explaining. So the first one is an unfamiliar concept. For example, with the app Byte. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, but Byte is a pretty awesome and unique application that lets you make rich collages of photos, videos, GIFs, sounds, and then show off your creations. It's kind of an app that lets people make small, tiny, mini apps inside. But there's absolutely no app like it. So onboarding is there, in their case is pretty crucial. The second are unfamiliar interactions. For example, like Clear. Clear is a to-do and reminders app that makes clever use of gestures like pinching vertically, or pinching two cells together, or shaking, um, to simplify managing and organizing your to-do lists. The third are empty states. Having an empty state is actually really awesome, because you can use that empty state space to instruct and inform, just like Evernote. If you've never added a note, for example, it provides helpful and personal instructions on how to add a new note. And the last one is personal information. Asking for permissions out of the blue is a big no-no. Uh, you kind of have to put the user in the context of why you're asking for whatever permission you're asking before you do it. So. Moving on somehow. Okay. Sorry for that. <laughs> there you go. So, Rent a Runway, for example, um, waits until the user gets to our stores page before we ask them for location permissions. And even so, we first give them an interstitial so they can select to dismiss the asking for permissions um, before we actually do it. So now that we've covered what to do, um, let's talk about some things you don't want to do. 
So don't explain the obvious. Your users have probably used apps in the past. So don't explain things that are obvious, like tapping on the back arrow to go back a screen. Um, just don't make the users feel stupid. Don't ask for too much. Don't overwhelm your users by telling them about everything up front. Because A, they won't remember that. B, they'll get bored. And C, they might skip it, and then they won't know how to use that feature later on. Don't just request permissions out of the blue. Wait until the appropriate time to first explain a certain feature before you ask for permissions to access a user's location, for example. Always wait until you absolutely need this. Don't do really long intros. People don't like to read, especially when they're itching to start using something. So make sure you're clear and concise. It's going to take you far. And last but not least, don't just do it once. For every new feature you create, consider whether it's self-explanatory enough for the users to just get it. Um, and if not, make sure you let them know how to use it. You might even want to consider letting users who haven't used the app in a really long time to redo the onboarding experience, because they probably forgot how to use your app. Or you can consider letting them access the onboarding at will. And this way, they're in control of when and what they learn. All right, so now I think we're ready to move on to our first demo. And here we're going to use the existing UI to help users understand the app better without being too obtrusive. So, so in your conference folder, Open um, 19, Engaging Onboarding. Open Demo 1, uh, Starter. And then open the Xcode project that's there. And feel free to follow along uh, with me with the Demo 1 markdown file that's located in the Instructor folder. So first, let's just build and run. Um, to look at this app and see some of its problem points. So problem number one, uh, the sign-up alert pops up immediately after launch. So the app wants me to give it my personal information before I even know that there's any value, um, that it has any value for me whatsoever. I don't really want to do that. Um, but for the purposes of the demo, let's move on. So now that I'm in, I see that it's showing me a bunch of movies. It's telling me that I can rate something, I'm not really sure what. Some other sections, recent movies. So I think, I don't really know what to do, but I can click on a movie or something. Um, so when I tap on a movie, <laughs> not a problem, another pop-up. Uh, it's asking me for location permissions out of the blue. And I don't really even want to read this. So I just want to press don't allow here. And now that I didn't allow it, it seems kind of angry at me over here. It's giving me some red text in bold. Doesn't really tell me why it wants my location. It just wants it. Um, so what else can I even do here? I don't know. OK, I can change the rating. Um, but I don't even know how to get out of the screen. So. Basically, I have no idea what's going on, what this app is, what it does. And in reality, we all probably would have deleted it by now. But since this is a demo about onboarding, that's not what we're going to do. Um, we're going to fix it. So a little bit of background of what this app is. It's a movie rating app. It, uh, you rate movies, and it suggests movies that you might like based on what other people that have liked the same movies have liked. If you tap and hold on a movie, this little rating pop-up comes up, and you can give the movie a rating. You can scroll through a couple more and rate another one. Cool. If you scroll down, you'll see this section at the bottom appeared with your already rated movies. 
Then if you scroll back up and you pull down a little harder, you'll see this filtering section over here where you can kind of filter what kind of movies you want to see. And if you pull down even harder, you will get to your account settings. But none of these uh, interactions are very intuitive. So otherwise, it's a pretty neat app for movie fanatics out there. Um, it just kind of needs a little tender loving care. Um, so let's get right to that. So in your Xcode project, first let's just get rid of that really annoying sign up alert. And you'll do that by going to view controllers and going to the main view controller over here. And scroll down to the view to load method. It's at uh, line 92. And we'll just get rid of this ask for sign up method. Just delete it. Let's build and run to make sure that's gone. All right, great. Um, perfect. So now let's go to user.swift, which is in the data folder over here. And here you will find an enum called onboarding progress. This enum is going to be the backbone for our onboarding. And we'll have 10 steps to kind of go through. First, we will greet the user. Then we'll explain what the app is, what it does. Then we'll make sure that they learn how to rate. Uh, and to really drive that point home, we're going to have them rate five things, because um, that's the main interaction in the app. Then we're going to make sure that they know to scroll to the bottom to find what they've already rated. And after they've scrolled down, we'll have them go back up and look at these filter and user settings sections. And we'll use this enum to display some text on an onboarding cell. We're going to add right here in between, in the middle of all of this. And the text to display is already set up in this message function on the enum. So you can check it out over here. Um, and at this point, you might be asking yourself why this is a good approach for this app. Well, all the main activity in the app happens on this one screen, either below over here or above this cell that we're going to add in between. And because this is a pretty vertically dense screen, it makes sense to put the instructions in the center. And reason number two is we just don't have too much time to make some really fancy onboarding. So moving on with the code, still in user.swift, uh, I've set up a protocol on the top called user onboarding delegate so that we know when the user moves a step further. Main view controller conforms to that protocol. And it's implemented in this main view contro controller plus extensions class, this one. So if you scroll to the bottom of that class, you'll see that we've conformed to that protocol here. And the function is nothing for now, but we'll fill it out as we kind of go along. So let's go back to main view controller. And we'll assign um, main view controller to be the delegate of user in view to load at the end. So we'll just say user dot delegate equals self. Cool. So now that that's out of our way, let's figure out how to use this screen to do some onboarding. Um, and we're, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to use the table view setup to add a new onboarding section. This section is only going to contain one cell, and that cell is going to contain one label that is going to give the user step-by-step -step instructions that explain every part of the app. So 
if you scroll up a little further, there is already an enum set up over here called sections that we'll use to control the onboarding and the movie sections. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this enum to update some relevant table view methods. And we'll start with number of rows in section. So that's at line number 222. So right now it's just returning how many movie sections there are. But what we want to do is grab the current section by saying sections and then passing the raw value as the section. And then we'll force unwrap that because it's just going to work, we know. And then we'll switch on the current section so that the ca if the case is onboarding, we'll always just return 1. And if the case is movies, we're going to return this over here. So movie sections dot keys dot count and then delete the return we had there before and also delete the default case and we're done with that next we'll replace um, what number of sections returns with just returning sections dot count so that's always going to be two um, and next we will go to the height for a row at index path. And again, we'll grab the like a constant called current section. And we'll grab the section that we're currently on by passing in the index path dot section and force unwrapping. And then we'll switch on the current section. And if the case is onboarding, we'll actually re check if the user onboarding steps, so like which onboarding step they're on. If that equals to onboarding progress dot count, so if they're on the last step, we'll return zero for the height. And if that's not the case, we will return 150. And in the case that we're in the movie section, we'll return 300. And now let's delete the default case and what we're returning at the end from before. Cool. So one last thing to do. If we go to cell for row at index path over here at line 160, 166. Um, we'll do the same thing where we grab the section, the current section equals sections. Raw value will pass in the index path dot section, and then do a switch on the current section, where for the onboarding case, we'll just return. Uh, normal UI table view cell for now. And if the case is movies, we'll copy and paste this bottom part of the code. There we go. So that should stay the same. And then again, remove the default case because we're covering all of them. So now in main view controller, there's also this nifty configure function that's going to help us style our cell a little bit when we pass it a cell, a normal UI table view cell, and some text. So it's just going to take the cell, take the text, and then spit out a styled text a cell. So let's go back to our cell for road index path in the onboarding case. Let's just give us some space over here. Let's make a new cell. 
type, just like a normal UI table view cell. And then let's also have a variable text to display and just keep it an empty string for now. And then we'll do a check. So if the user's onboarding steps are smaller than or equal to the onboarding progress dot count. So if the user has not finished with their onboarding, we will say that text to display should be equal to user onboarding progress dot message. That's the message function we saw before on the onboarding enum. And then at the end, we'll call the configure method and we'll pass it to cell with text, text to display. And we will return that cell. So now to let users actually tap through, we need to advance their onboarding steps by one every time they tap on the onboarding cell. And we will do that in the did select row at index path. So here again we'll grab the current section. And we'll pass in the index path <coughs> dot section. And if the current section is onboarding. We'll just say user dot onboarding steps should increase by one. All right. What are you doing? Okay. So let's build and run to make sure that that's working. Great. So we have our onboarding cell, and if I, so I can't tap through yet because we forgot to <coughs> reload. Um, we could forgot to reload the road. So we could do that in this did select row at index path, but instead we're actually going to use another place to do the update. Um, so do you remember back when I was telling you about this onboarding delegate? We're going to use it now. Um, so go over to main view controller plus extensions and scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm going to give us some space over here. So here we're just going to reload the cell to make sure that we can go through the steps. But let's actually just add a new function so that um, we'll animate the reloading of the cell a little bit to make it nicer. So add a new function called animate boarding row. And here we're just going to grab the index path we want to reload. And you can do that by saying index path and then just hard coding the item is zero and the section is zero because it's always going to be that. And we have to make it into an array so that we can pass it to the table view. And now let's grab the table view and call the reload rows method where we're passing in the index paths with the animation fade. And now we just have to call this animate onboarding row in this user progress method. So let's go ahead and call that. All right, let's build and run to make sure that things are working correctly. All right, cool. All right, I can tap through all of the steps. So congrats, that's it. That's the first part of the demo. We have a basic very basic onboarding for the main screen that lets users tap through. Um, it's looking a lot better now, but 
tapping through an onboarding section is kind of boring. So uh, I think we can do more. And in the next demo, we're going to tie some of these steps to user actions. But first, I think we can take a little bit of a break, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, welcome back. <laughs> uh, so now that we kind of built our first demo, and we set up all the steps for the user that they need to take to fully understand the app, we just need to um, we'd be a little more responsive. We don't want the user to just have to tap through the onboarding, but instead we want to connect the steps to actions that they take to progress. Um, and why is that important? I'm glad you asked. So the one really annoying thing uh, about a lot of onboardings that you see that is that they're really boring. Even though they might have some sweet parallax animations and like funky graphics, they don't do much for you if you just have to swipe through them. So if you have to create a text-based onboarding, you need to make sure to engage the user. And if possible, you want to make it interactive. Give the user something to do and praise them along the way. They'll feel a great sense of accomplishment once they've completed a task. Um, and you can even make it into a game and make them want to get to the next step. The last really important part is don't reinvent the wheel. You already have the whole app done and all the functionality is there. So don't try to make some fancy duplicate of the app for the onboarding only. Just use the real app and have the users try it out right there. So who does it well? A lot of people, but um, I have two examples. And my first example is IFTTT, or If This Then That. Their onboarding start starts with a couple of swipe through screens. And while I mentioned I'm not generally a fan of this, um, because not many apps use the technique thoughtfully, I do have to admit that If This Then That does it pretty well. The text and picture onboarding screens are really helpful in communicating the idea behind the app. It immediately tells me what the app is about. It's about somehow connecting the services that I know and love together. And it really sets the scene for what to expect when the user gets into the app. And then when you start using the app, um, if this and that uses the same blue transparent overlay that they use for the swipe through screens to give you tips on what you can do as you explore the app. And these steps don't go away until you've pressed got it, that bottom button over there, um, or you've completed the actions they propose. And all of this is great for two reasons. One, the design language around onboarding is carried throughout the app. And two, the users can control whether they want to explore on their own or if they want help. The second example is Two Dots. Two Dots is a game where you have to connect as many dots as possible together to make them disappear. Two Dots makes you a part of the game right away. They use their existing game with some helpful text hints along the way to help you figure out what you can and can't do. And they praise the user along the way. So why is this great? You learn how to play the game immediately. There's no need to show you pictures of what you can do and can't do, because you can just try it out right there. And if you don't complete the step, you don't move forward. At the end, you drop immediately into gameplay. So the flow is never broken. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So with that, I think it's time to move on to the second part of our demo. So let's open the engaging onboarding folder in your conference folder. Um, open demo two, go to starter, and open the starter project. 
And feel free to follow along with me with the demo2 markdown file that's in the instructor folder. So in order to speed things along a little bit, I made some changes <laughs> to the starter project. Um, so if you go to if you go to the main view controller, actually let's go to user dot swift first and look at this onboarding progress um, enum again. So right now the user is tapping through all of the messages, but that's not what we really want. Um, really only want them to tap through in four steps. So these four steps that they should tap through are greet, explain, two settings, and then say goodbye. The other ones we want to tie to different actions they can do in the app. So I updated mainViewController.swift a little bit. And we can check that out in did select row. So we ended up having just increasing the onboarding steps of the user before in what we left off. But I replaced that to only increase the onboarding steps on a tap in these four cases. Pretty simple. Um, so let's build and run and see where we are right now. All right. So we let the user kind of move through the first two steps by tapping. And then we're not letting them move on any further. So the first two steps, greet and explain, are covered. So now we let's move on to the learn to rate step. Um, because learning to rate is the most important part of this app. So we'll do that by going to main view controller plus extensions over here. And there's a method here called user rating for was changed. This one. Um, and in this method, basically, you increase the number of movies that the user has rated when they rate a movie. So we'll use this to check if they've rated a movie or not, and how many they've rated. So let's go ahead and add some code for step three here, just step learn to rate. At this point, we'll check if the user's onboarding progress is learn to rate. And if so, we'll just move them further. So we'll increase their onboarding steps by one. And now that they've learned to rate, uh, we really want them to learn how to rate a couple more because we want to drive this point of rating home. Make sure that they really understand this because it's the most important interaction in the app. So in the same method, we're going to um, also increase the onboarding steps for the rate five step. So let's add that in. Step rate five. So if the user's onboarding progress is rate five. Uh, but we're not actually going to have them rate five things because it would be really long to demo that for every single rating. So I'll just pretend that it's five, but actually say two. So here we'll check if the number of movies rated is just more than one. And in that case, we will then increase the onboarding steps by one. OK, so let's build and run to make sure that that works. All right, so we say hello, we explain what this app is, and then to start, tap and hold the movie to rate it. Cool. 
So now if I write 2, I should see a new message. Great. But I see a problem here, which is that I don't actually know how many a few means when this asks me to rate a few more. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, I have no idea if that means 5 or 2 in our case. And if the user doesn't know what their goal is, we're kind of on our way of losing their attention. When you're doing onboarding, you kind of always want to give your users the most clear and discrete actions to accomplish. So we'll fix this by adding a little more to the message to have it be more precise. So let's switch back to the main view controller. Let's go to the self or row at index path method over here. So here we have our text. And if the user is at the onboarding, if the user's onboarding progress is at rate 5, we will add some more text to text to display. So we'll make text to display equal to text to display plus a little more. And to give us some room, we'll do a couple of new lines. And they say how many movies they've already rated and how many movies we expect them to rate. So we'll grab the number rated from the user. And then we'll say out of five. Cool. So let's build and run and see how that looks like. Cool. All right. Great. Explain. Tap and hold to rate the first one. And now um, I see how many movies I still need to rate and how many I've rated already. Except that I made a typo, so I'm going to fix that right now. There we go. Um, cool. So we just tied two actions to the user. We gave them a clear goal on what to do to move forward. And the next step is to scroll to the bottom to see the movies they've already rated. And we'll do that in main view controller. There is a method called update onboarding for scrolling. Yeah. Update onboarding for scrolling. And this method gets called at the end of scroll view did and decelerating and scroll view did and dragging so that we can check if they've hit the bottom of the screen. And I've set up some constants over here that will uncomment right now. So we have the height, the content offset y, and a distance from the bottom. We're going to use these to check if the distance of the bottom, of the top to the bottom, is equal to the height of the screen. And if so, that means that we've reached the bottom, basically. So let's update this function. So we're on the scroll to bottom step where we're going to check if the distance from the bottom is equal to height, and if the user on boarding progress equals scroll to bottom, we will advance their onboarding steps by one. Cool. Let's go ahead and build and run to check this out. All right, tap through, write some movies. Meh. All right. There we go. Um, so let's scroll down. We see this, and now the message on top should change to prompt user to drag down to see the filter. So they've scrolled back to the top, and they should drag down to see the filter. In main view controller, um, there's a method that checks if the filters view, which is this view over here, is expanded and by how much. And that 
method is called filters view should expand with this one. So let's go ahead and go to that method at line 340. And it has two constants set up over here that we can uncomment now. The first one is filters view expanded size, which means that um, it's the size of this, um, the filters view when it's expanded to show the filters view. And then the settings view expanded size, which is the size of this, this part. Um, so we're going to use these two constants to compare against this tabletop constant um, to check exactly what step we're on. Okay, so now let's add the next steps after everything else in the animation block. So for step, we're at step after scrolling now. So if self dot user dot onboarding steps dot onboarding progress is after scrolling and if the tabletop constant equals the filters view expanded size then we want to increase the user's onboarding steps by one. So similarly we want to use the same method um, to check if they found the settings. So let's just go ahead and add that next step here as well. So that step is going to be the settings prompt. So if the user is onboarding progress equals settings prompt and if the tabletop constant is equal to the settings view expanded size we will increase the users onboarding steps by one great all right let's do another build and run to make sure that that all works together all right tap through tap and hold Made another one. Okay, scroll to the bottom. Scroll back to the top. Drag down. Great. Change the message. Change the message again. All right. So we're almost there. Um, but there's a couple of things that um, we should figure out first. So let's um, remember how in back in demo one we implemented that um, user progress to step uh, for the user onboarding delegate. So let's go back to that. That changed a little bit too. It's in main view controller plus extensions at the bottom. So we used that before to animate smoothly between different sections. And we just had the animate onboarding row call at the bottom here. But um, there are a couple of things that I added here. For example, on the show sign up step, we actually want to show sign up button, for example. If I tap this, I want to see the sign up button. And for say goodbye, I want to make sure that the filters view close, uh, even if the user doesn't tap on the onboarding cell itself. I just added that. And at this point, we're almost at the finish line. We just need to get them to sign up. But there's a tiny improvement that we can do, um, which is since this onboarding cell is not always at the top when the user is completing some of these steps, like when they're at the bottom and they see this, or when they do this and they see the settings prompt and stuff. They don't necessarily pay attention to this onboarding cell. So we need some sort of another form of feedback to let them know that the system status got changed. 
And what we'll use for this is a little taptic feedback if you have a device. But if you don't have a device we're, and you're on a simulator like me, we're just going to use some sound. And the sound we're going to use is the same sound that we use for rating, just because it's a familiar sound. So we'll do that right over here in the animate onboarding row, because it's there already. Right after the index paths methods, let me give us some space here. Just let's create a new variable called should alert of type bool. And then we'll use that to decide whether we should play a sound uh, when a step is completed uh, or not. So we'll only we'll switch on the user's onboarding progress. And if the user's on the step after scrolling or two settings, then we'll say that should alert is true. And if not, uh, should alert is going to be false. And now we'll check if we can do some taptic feedback or we'll play a sound. So if you have a device, feel free to grab that. And before we do this, I just want to say that this is a slightly unconventional way to check if your device has uh, support for taptic feedback. And um, I'm only going to do this for the demo. I don't support or endorse you submitting apps to the App Store by using this private API. Um, just because it's faster. Okay. So we're going to check if I grab the current device and see what the value for this key is. Feedback support level. Um, we're going to check if it's an int, if we can unwrap it as an int, and if that is so, if it equals 2. If this is the case, then we should be able to do some taptic feedback. In that case, we'll make a generator. UI, I'll type UI impact, impact feedback generator. And we'll just do the style light, because we don't want to scare them with some intense buzzing. Um, and then, if that's possible, we will call the impact occurred method over here. And if I'm on a simulator, let's we're just going to play a sound. So let's make a constant for the sound ID. Let's call it system sound ID of type system sound ID, and it's going to be number zero, 1104. And then we'll just call the audio services play alert sound method. And we'll pass the system sound ID to it. There we go. Cool. All right. So with this all set up, we're kind of at the last step uh, of having the user sign up. So go back to main view controller. And let's find the sign up method. Sign up. Sign up with and. And here we will for one last time advance the user's onboarding steps by one, right before we do a reload of table, uh, reload data for the table view. All right, take a deep breath. Let's hope that that all works. So let's build and run and marvel at how great we are. All right, so first step, you say hi, tap to find out more. Hmm, that's not working. Oh wait, totally forgot something. <laughs> um, 
Here, go back to the main view controllers plus extensions. I forgot to use our alert. So all of this stuff should be wrapped in if should alert. So that's add an if should alert. Let's add a closing bracket over here. And let's move everything a step so that it looks neat. And now let's build and run. All right, so tap to find out more what this app is. To start, tap and hold a movie below to rate it. Go ahead and do that. So I'll rate a few more. Eh. I hear La La Land is pretty good. Scroll to the bottom. OK, we got our sound. Um, so now I'm curious what's happening, and I'll scroll back up. I drag down to find the filters, and I drag down some more. And I got my sound, and now I'm tapping for the last time. I tap on the sign up button. Finally, I understand why I'm signing up for this and what the point is, so I'll happily do that. It's going to contract the filters view and say goodbye. If I tap, that goes away. So congrats for making this far. At this time, you should have a pretty solid understanding of um, onboarding. So in step one, we kind of leveraged the existing UI to create our onboarding experience. And in step two, we tied the onboarding steps um, with user actions. So that kind of concludes the demo part of this section. Um, but there's still a chunk of the app that is unexplained, which is this whole shindig over here. And in the lab, you'll use the skills that you've learned to figure out how to onboard the user to understand this section. Are there any questions before we start the lab? All right, go at it. <laughs> So this kind of concludes the what's going on. So that's what's happening right now. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the lab. And before we go, let's just recap on kind of what we learned today. So you learned what onboarding is, what, uh, what it's good, what it's good for, and the four basic UX principles of when to do it. And you also learned what not to do to avoid common pitfalls. Uh, in demo one, you learned how to leverage your existing app UI to serve as sort of an onboarding platform. And in demo two, you learned about the importance of keeping the user engaged and reacting to their input and helping them gain trust in your app. And the lab, you applied or you will apply later on all those learnings to kind of ask for a critical piece of personal information, uh, the location permissions. So good job. And now where to go from here? Well, there are a couple of articles, onboarding for beginners, and how to build a delightful onboarding experience from the really awesome Smashing Magazine that I suggest you guys read. Uh, and in general, Smashing Magazine has a lot of really great UX content. There are a lot of examples at this link of screen by screen onboarding, really a lot of examples, from the UX archive. And then I would suggest you guys check out Movie Lens, which is where the idea for this app came from. It's a really cool site uh, that lets you discover some movies you might want to you might want to see, and you all should check it out because it's really awesome. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter as Hello Sunshine. And after the session, you can find me in the Bell Lab, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions about onboarding or anything else you think I can answer. 
um, at the lab or during the rest of the conference. So I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you so much for coming. <laughs>